Now let's continue our lecture on measurement and scales. In this video, we're going to look at a couple of commonly used scales. The first is called graphic rating scales. You know, by the name, you can see that typically we use graphics to indicate uh, two anchors, which is on the left side and the right side, so you get some idea. Uh, and uh, graphic rating scale typically are used uh, for children uh, who are less cognitively capable, so we can give them some simple choices using graphs. This type of skill called itemized rating skills. Uh, basically, we have uh, uh, respondents can select an answer from a limited number of order categories. So, the example given on the slide basically say we have uh, for the top one art skill you have five categories and uh, on both sides we have both on the both ends we have you know important as an anchor for one and on the right hand side we have a non-important five as another anchor so respondents can choose uh, the numbers based upon their perception of the particular question whether it's important or not important and you notice that we have two different kinds of skills, odd skills versus even skills. The difference is that it's obvious, right? Um, odd skills uh, respondents can choose a neutral position, but uh, for even skills, they have to take a position. You know, you, you cannot, you have to choose either three or four. So if you choose four, you are leaning more towards not important, but if you choose uh, Three, you t you know you kind of uh, lean towards more important. This distinction has a very important uh, differences when you measure different populations from different cultures. For example, when you do a survey for on um, the Asian populations, we tend to use even skills because in the culture, like uh, Asian culture, uh, collectivist culture, you know, also you know, it's, it's a Latino culture is also collectivist culture versus American culture, the more individualist culture. So we tend to use, uh, you know, try to, uh, you know, the respondents in those cultures tend to be less confrontational. They 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 all, they all, they have lots of uh, neutral positions. Uh, so that's why we want to make sure that they do have, they do take a, a position. So we use uh, even skills if we survey population from those cultures. This slide shows some of the examples of itemized rating skills. Uh, by the way, uh, for skills, when you use them for your survey, it, the best idea is to copy uh, whatever the established skills have been uh, in use. Uh, you typically do not invent your own skills. For your online survey, I hope that uh, you uh, copy as much possible for the type of skills that you will be using. Uh, and obviously, if you don't have that, you know, uh, the type of the skill, you can uh, Im uh, imitate the type of the ag arrangement. For example, uh, quality, you can be very good, good, neither good, no, bad, fair, poor. So you can use that for your uh, survey. But if it's something that is not, like, for example, uh, not a, uh, uh, you don't see it, so you can uh, just try to adapt the existing skills for your own use. This scale is called rank order skills. Rank order skills, uh, as you can see, we uh, exist. Uh, you know, now since we don't have uh, online uh, and in in face to face classrooms, we, we uh, typically have students do this type of the exercise to rank order. 
uh, different brands of cos cosmetics try to and then you know typically uh, we, we have the uh, we have some of the brands you know for you to uh, just uh, figure out the the characteristics of each brand so this one uh, obviously we get some ordinal data because uh, we want them to rank from uh, one being the best the brand that meets the best that best meets the characteristics being evaluated six being the worst so uh, from one to six uh, you know kind of uh, one being the most and the six being the least uh, when you do the rank order skills make sure that you give um, instructions very clearly in this case we have very kind of long little long paragraph tell what the respondents should do. Next, this this type of skill called peer comparison. Peer comparison are used when you try to make it easier for respondent to to answer. Basically, we say we only have two answers, so uh, and, and the, the respondents can just. Uh, uh, you know, can can just uh, do it, do it in a way that's going to be very fast. Especially if you have uh, many many items, and uh, you don't have to make them think too hard. Why do we have this type of the uh, compare comparison skills? Uh, when when we try to do a perceptual map, for example, to two characteristics, we want to do some multi-dimensional. Uh, mapping and then we want to make sure that uh, we get lots of data from respondents and uh, this type of the skills uh, tend to be typically it's kind of a pair of opposites so for them to quickly get a response next constant sum skills this is type of skills really really useful when you try to force Respondent to do some trade offs. Uh, as you can see uh, in this scale, uh, we have 100 points and uh, we have how many items is competent to wear, is durable, made by well known brand, brand of sports manufacturer, etc. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven different characteristics for us tennis sportswear. And if you just uh, ask consumers in terms of its importance, probably you would get like uh, you know high numbers on importance uh, when you ask them using itemized skills. But the, the truth is that uh, manufacturers they have to uh, they have to do some uh, trade-offs and or decision making in terms of which is more important so that uh, the uh, manufacturers can uh, market their products properly. For example, is made in the United States? Is that uh, important? Maybe it is to some people. So if the consensus that is made in the United States is important, then obviously we want to focus on this feature when we market this type of uh, tennis sportswear. So when you, when you have this a constant sum scales mean that uh, you it's a relative importance if you if you allocate to, uh, importance to uh, some variables and you obviously going to be diminished importance for some other variables or other items and uh, this type of skills by the way is also uh, being used to evaluate uh, uh, group performance uh, group work and uh, at the end of semester, uh, you, each individual student will need to submit a peer evaluation form using this type of skill. Next, semantic differential skills. Semantic differential skills are extremely useful for uh, measuring different characteristics of 
a product or a brand. And then to get the visual um, map about it, its characteristics, especially in comparison with its competitive brands. Now, if you look at this, this diagram and if you draw them uh, out, it looks like EKG diagram. And if you superimpose with your competitors, and you will be able to figure out uh, which features are lacking or superior to your competitors. But typically, this type of skills um, will have seven point, and it's anchored by a pair of opposites. For example, the first one kind of modern, and uh, and then versus old fashioned. So. If the consumer respondent thinks that this brand uh, is very, very modern, obviously you choose the one. Light scale. By far, the survey research uses light scale the most simply because it's, it's very easy to use and uh, it's also tend to be uh, tend to be well structured in this case. Uh, by the way, we have uh, somehow when I do the slides, there is somewhat agree. There should be a strongly agree uh, part. Sorry for this uh, little error. And as you can see, uh, we have. The question at the top, how did you feel about the registration process when you become a new user? Uh, so this is, uh, uh, we have a couple of items, uh, just rank, just uh, put in the matrix format, in this kind of matrix format, very, very useful. And uh, the respondents will be able to figure it out very fast. Uh, so this is a very a good way of uh, organizing your survey. Uh, we use matrix format. And now let's discuss how to select a skill. Obviously, we have a variety of skills to choose from. Some of the skills will be useful for some purposes. But we have a few principles to guide us. Number one is called the nature of the concept being measured. Now, this is a little bit uh, abstract because uh, you have to make sure that uh, what type of variable you are measuring. Sometimes if you measure uh, if you measure overall, for example, sometimes if you measure overall satisfaction uh, with the service provider, for example, like uh, Kaiser Permanente, and then uh, it's uh, you, you have to make sure that uh, you tell the respondents it, if it's overall satisfaction with the hospital or it's just specific Visit, it's, it's a satisfactory with a specific visit. Okay. Number two, the type of skills, number of still skill categories. Uh, so the second criteria is that uh, um, we have so many different kinds of rating skills. We have graphic skills, we have uh, light skills, we have constant sum, we have semantic differential skills. And uh, so each skill has its own advantage disadvantage. We have to make sure that we use it to the best possible situation. And also the number of skill categories. You can have a category as few as three, or sometimes you can have as many as seven or eight. Sometimes I can see uh, people have uh, even 10 categories. Now, let me tell you, uh, it's the more category you have, especially if you have like uh, the important on um, on the important versus unimportant. You know, if you put like one to five, it's easy for respondent to figure it out. But if you start to put the one to ten, uh, which by the way, uh, it's been used uh, not uh, uncommon, uh, but I, I think it really gets a little bit more complicated because. Uh, Respondents would have a difficult time to distinguish between six, seven, or even though five and 
eight would be uh, able to figure it out. But uh, what about the different, you know, six, seven, five, six? I mean, it's it's tough to get the more accurate ratings. Number three uh, criteria or the guideline we have that kind of balanced versus non balanced. With balanced skills, you can see that uh, the skills have equal number of positive and negative categories. And uh, you know, in the case of the strongly agree, strongly disagree, you know, they are balanced because uh, whether we have four items or five items, we all uh, just have equal number of positive, equal number of negatives. This is actually the best type of the scales we uh, we need to use. But other times you use non-balanced skills if you want to uh, weight, if you have one skill weighted more towards the positive side, or you want to uh, weight it more towards the negative side. This is a little bit trick that uh, uh, researchers can use to suit its own purposes. For example, the poll numbers. The poll numbers you can ask questions differently. And uh, depends on how you ask question, how you scale the, the categories, you would get totally different responses. Uh, so we have to be very careful. So when we read uh, research findings, because you, you know we want to make sure that the balanced skills are used rather than imbalanced skills. The last consideration we need to take into account is that. Uh, odd versus even number of response choices. I, I, I think when we talk about item migrating skills, I discussed in detail. Uh, even number of responses choices actually force consumers to take a position, while odd number doesn't provide that option. Okay, so that's all for the uh, our discussions about uh, different types of skills for measurement.